Hey guys, my name is Sakesh and welcome back to my channel Sakesh Education. And today we will be looking at the answers for the Australian Mathematics Competition, which I did earlier this term. So let's go and let's revise the answers for the test. This 2020 AMC test was a little bit hard, but we could have did it so let's go through the answers and see what was the right one and how we could have improved is the so this is the front cover guys now what do you call first question is they're asking us how many squares one one by one squares are in this diagram so we get five ab options there are 16 18 20 24 and 25 now what we have to do is we need to count each single box so if you go to the solutions you can see that we need to count each single box so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 19 20 21 22 23 24 so as we can see there are 24 boxes so we know each box in a normal cube is one centimeter times one centimeter so we can say that this all these cubes are 24 so the answer is d 24 and moving on to the next question they ask us what is half of 2020 now what we can do here is we can divide 2020 by 2 or multiply it by one half. They both are the same thing but you can do what you like and what's best for you. For me accordingly I prefer half times 2020 as that's much easier than 2020 divided 2 but the answer is 1010 10. so 1010. 10. 2020 10 10 so the correct answer is e guys for question number two the answer is e now we're moving on to question number question number three we get that what is the parameter of this triangle and they've given us five options hence again a b c d and e so we all know that the perimeter of a triangle is when you add all the sides of the triangle. So when we add all these sides, we end up with 34. So 34 is our resulting answer. For question number 3, because perimeter is side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. So that's the answer. 34B. I stepped on the train. This is question number 4, guys. I stepped on the train at 8.48 a.m. and I got off at 9.21 a.m. How many minutes did I spend on the train? So they're asking us, let's take it in a third person view. Someone got onto a train and then he got on at 8.48 according to that and got off at 8.21 so what's the thing is we can do it in two ways the easiest way is we subtract 921 minus 848 and we will get the answer b33 or we can count up to nine o'clock from eight so we know that timings can only go up to like six no 60 minutes so 860 there's not 860 so 859 so what we can do is we can see that so now we we know that between 8.48 and 9 there is 12, 12 minutes and then 12 plus 21 is 33. So we get the same answer hence again but the easier way is to just subtract both the things. So the time he or she reached subtracted by the time he or she started. So that will give us 33 minutes. So the answer is B, 33. Now moving on to question number five, they were asking us what is the value of y in this triangle? So we all know that in a triangle, all the sides must equal to 180 degrees, no matter what the angles are. All the sides must equal to 180 degrees. So that's like a basic formula which we all have must have needed to know. So now we can add both of these numbers, and so. 
to do this question you kind of needed to know algebra so algebra is really easy a little bit of algebra not in depth so all sides of a triangle is side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 will equal to 180. So 80 plus 70 plus y is 180. So y is equal to 180 minus 80, which will give us 100, and then 100 minus 70. I know this is not the right way to do it at all. I should have kept a bracket or anything. But guys, you understand the main concept. So we should have added both these if 80 plus 70, 150, and then 180 minus 150, which is 30. So we get the same answer anyways, but you still got to know the concept in your brain. When you understand the concept, you get it better and you get the answer done. Now question number six. Question number six, they've given us this equation and they're asking us two minus brackets, zero minus bracket, two minus zero, close bracket close bracket now what we can see is that 2 minus 0 minus 2 minus 0 and there should have been another bracket there which I forgot sorry is equal to so 2 minus 0 is 2 then we can take this bracket out 0 minus 2 it's minus 2 so 0 minus 2 is minus 2 so now inside the brackets we have 2 minus minus 2 and we know that minus and minus adds up to a plus so 2 plus 2 is 4 so our answer for this question is e4 question number six now in the next diagram or question number seven they've given us in the grid the total of each row is given at the end of the row and the total of each column is given at the bottom of the column the value of n is 6. n is, they're asking us what is the value of n. We can find it easily, guys. All we need to do is first add these both up, keep the value as x unknown, and it should add up to 21. So let's go to the next one. I just drew this diagram myself. Here, it's equal to 8 plus 7 plus x, which is equal to 20. So then you add both of them which is 15 then 20 minus 15 is 5 so y is 5 so we can now write here we can write y as being we can write y as being 5 then over here it says 6 plus 9 plus x is equal to 18 because 6 plus 9 and then this unknown value is x is equal to 18. So we can add both of them which is 15 and then 18 minus 15 is 3. So our answer for this one is 3. So we can write it in bully 3. Now we know that both of these sides, both of these sides have got what you call both of these sides have got in value now. Oh, sorry, guys. Both of these. Let me just get back. Both of these sides have got a value, and now we have to find the unknown in the middle, which is n. So five plus three plus n is equal to nine. So five plus three is eight. So n is equal to nine minus eight. We so n is equal to. We can write n is equal to. N is equal to. We can probably write that n is equal to 1. So guys, that's the end of question number 7. Now let's move on to question number 8. A letter G is rotated clockwise, clockwise, so clockwise is that direction, by 135 degrees. Which of the following pictures best represent the image the final image so we're going to rotate the normal G 135 degrees and which would result so now here I've got a demonstration I need to get out for this demonstration to show you this demonstration so you see this right guys now we know that this is a letter G and then when this is one 90 degrees guys 90 degrees as it was this way I rotated it this way so now it's 90 degrees and to make it 135 degrees we can approx approx approximately make it that way so if it's here this is letter g make it that way and then a little bit that so now let's move it a little bit 
like 135 so that's 180 guys so 135 would be somewhere over there so we know that 135 would be somewhere over here and then if you go to the previous question it says the letter g is rotated 135 degrees a b c d or e we know that the closest image to this one is e so our answer for question number eight is e guys now let's move on to question number nine in question number nine they're given us some fractions and they told us to subtract both of the fractions so we know that we need to add all these top and all the bottom and we need to add all these and this to make it simple for you you can really call strike out all this so five by one and then five by one and then one by five by one and then one by three but i wouldn't recommend doing that i will just recommend adding all that things because i never tried i'm just telling you on the spot this is the way i did it guys all I did is I added all the top, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and then divided by, symbol, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, minus 1 plus 2. So, this comes adds up to 15 by 10, minus 3 by 6. Now, when you simplify both these fractions, you can just do it without simplifying. For example, find the common denominator, which is 30, and multiplying, multiply 15 by 3, and then... 3 by 5 which will give us 45 minus 15 and then you get 30 out of 30 so that's 1 but I simplified it to make it easier for me so 3 by 2 minus 1 and 1 half is 2 by 2 as both the denominators are same and you can subtract 3 minus 1 is 2 so and is 1 for C 1 for C 1 and guys, moving on to the last question for today, we have Sebastian is thinking of two numbers whose sum is 26 and whose difference is 14. The product of Sebastian's two numbers is what? So we know that here, they've given us five, what do you call, choices as usual. This is my explanation guys. X plus Y is equal to 29, right? You know, 26 according to them. So two numbers. Then x minus y is equal to 14 according to the explanation. So 2x is equal to 26 plus 14. So then 2x is equal to 40 and then x is equal and then x is equal to 20. So then x plus y must be 26, right? So 20 plus y is 26. Then what's y? Then we know that y is equal to 26 minus 20. So 26 minus 20 is equal to 6. So we know that y is 6. So now they're asking us the product of Sebastian's two numbers. So they're not asking us the numbers. They're asking us the product of Sebastian's two numbers. So we can write it as first number is 20, second number is 6. When you multiply 20 and 6, we get D. 120. So we get the answer as 120 and in the choices below D is the right answer guys. So guys, that's it for today. If you like my video, please subscribe. Subscribe. Please subscribe guys if you like my video. Thank you. And also guys, stay tuned for my other videos as I will be currently uploading them. Because I did not want to stuff you guys up with all the 30 questions in one row. So maybe we can do it 10, 10, 10. So I will upload it soon. But for now, bye guys. S subscribe to my channel. Sukesh Education. Bye guys. Have a fun day. And this is Sukesh Education. So yes guys, that's it for today. Bye.